So those of you that have done many projects at home realize that sometimes things just don't work out the way you plan. Just like on the 401 to Phoenix this week, we ran into some issues and we're changing plans. I couldn't have imagined finding this old airplane that sat for years would change my life along with so many others. In the last few episodes, the team and I have been struggling to have the Phoenix ready for paint. What we thought would take us two weeks has turned into six. Last week, we thought we were ready only to find out that we needed to change our plans. Instead of it going to the paint shop, it's gonna be a couple more days till we can do that, which is uh, probably the third time now that we've rescheduled. We're gonna have to modify the stand we built for transport and do some of the paint work right here in the hangar. This one's clean. Look at that. One of them. That one's not too bad either. Yeah, it's pretty clean too. Nice. <laughs> well, it is attached. Yeah, the holes are a little oblong, so I figured I'd center punch them to give me my center mark. Well, now we gotta lift her up, throw the casters on. See if it'll take some weight. Looks good. How's this looking? Good. Got them tacked up there. Yeah, this actually looks really good. Kind of tall. <laughs> I know. I walked up to it and it's sitting like it's it's sitting like really high. This looks like it. The plan. It looks like it worked out. Yeah, and it don't have much wiggle. No, so. it's not much wiggle, and uh, you know the locking casters. Looks like it's working. So now we got to lift the other side and uh, do the same, and hopefully nothing weird happens. 
when we lift it. Cool. Yeah, this would be nice. Like, we, we should be able to, like, spin this thing around whichever way we want. Yeah. Yeah, that would make it really nice. Cool. Donuts in the hangar. Donuts in the hangar. <laughs> How comes when we're about to do something sketchy, Sam shows up? I, I have no clue. It's like my spider sense. Sammy sense. Sammy sense. All right. I think once we pull the side up, it may come over here a little bit. So. Yeah. The tail just swings and smacks me. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh! Well, that was rather uneventful. Yeah. That was my massive holding. Oh, that was that was yeah. you, Sam. The fuselage. The fuselage holding. <laughs> Professional fuselage holder. The only thing I wasn't sure on is if we wanted to put a gusset. But that's something we can look at then. Well, it wouldn't be bad to put a gusset there. Yeah, if we took a, a tube from here down Just to, to here, be safe. I, I think that'd be a good idea on all four. Crossbar in, all attached, casters are on. I also made a little gusset to go and triangulate that a little bit so we don't get any spring or flex there. So today is finally the day that I head over to the testing center and I test for my written. I've been flying, I've been involved in aviation for about a year and a half now, and I've done a ton of flying but I haven't gotten my written test done yet. I've been studying for it uh, a lot more recently, but with my schedule, I mean, guys, I work 70, 80 hours a week, uh, pretty much every week. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of projects I do at home. I'm a busy guy, but that's no excuse. So I studied my butt off and um, I had to take that written exam today. And after I get that written exam, I have a little bit of flying to do, and I'll finally be taking my check ride, so I will be uh, a pilot, a certificated pilot. So, uh, excited? Let's see how it turns out. So after days and days of cramming and studying and working with Pilots Institute, <laughs> all their training stuff, uh, I passed. So so my written's done. Next, it's on to the check ride, and then I can finally say I'm a pilot. So guys, get it done. Just jump in, cram, study, even if it's like a half hour a day. Just get in and do it and get it done. Can't wait for the next step. So excited. So the more and more I dig into things on the 401, especially the avionics, the more I'm reminded that technology is always advancing. And if I'm not learning, I'm falling behind. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen that artificial intelligence, well, it's all over the news. And that brings me to today's video sponsor, Brilliant.org. They're the best way to learn math and computer sciences interactively. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from fundamental and advanced math to AI data science, neural networks, and more, with new lessons added monthly. I started with their basic, what is computing course, and I love how they made it so easy to understand. I was always hesitant to learn more about computer sciences because it always seemed so intensive. But with Brilliant, it's not only easy, but it's enjoyable too. They have an easy to understand interactive diagrams that explain topics really well. So let's face it, normally learning about these things is boring and extremely hard to do. But the way Brilliant.org does it, it really has become so much more fun to learn about things in the STEM fields. With Brilliant.org, they make it super easy. You don't have to set aside hours and hours to learn something new. So if you guys wanna learn more about computer sciences and mathematics, 
you need to check out Brilliant. The best part is right now you get a free 30-day trial by using the link brilliant.org slash rebuild rescue, or you can click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And now let's get back to fixing this thing up. So we dropped off the TB20 here at SureFlight. It was on the airport here to get the avionics and the TB20 all sorted out so we can take it on its first mission. And it turns out there was a lot of work that needed done. Man, they have this thing all ripped apart and getting the last bit of what needed done done, which is some stuff in the avionics. So this is like the last thing we have to do to uh, get this thing flying and go on its first mission. So totally excited. They're replacing all of the pedo and static lines. Found mold in them, found mildew in them, found moisture in them. So it's, it's gonna be nice having this all replaced. And you know, it's, it's, it's just a ton of work too. So sent out all the gauges, no, not all the gauges, most of the gauges, and we're gonna get them all overhauled back in here. And then it'll be time to go. Can't wait to get that thing flying again. So our box came, we got a delivery today and we got some replacement panels for the front of the nose. They have a little bit of corrosion on, but they are in much, much better shape than the panels that we had to use. And just in time to get these cleaned up and get it over to paint. And we also got a new, to us, a brand new used Southwind heater. So this is a heater that goes in the nose of the 401. This one will, seems to be, and hopefully is, in a lot better shape than the one we pulled out of there because the one we pulled out of there was like really bad. There's literally birds living inside of this tube of the heater. So, uh, so we're gonna send this one out for overhaul. We'll have a brand new overhaul heater for this and two good panels from the nose so we can get this thing painted. This is like the project that never gets painted lately. So can't wait till this is done. So these are the ice shields that we got to get off of the 401. And actually Joe and I got the other side off. It was more Joe than I, but those ice shields were, they were just beat up and, and we didn't know what was going to be underneath here. I don't see any corrosion, which is good. If you look at a lot of these holes, they are definitely not looking the best. I mean, it even looks like somebody before did some interesting stuff on here and some of these holes are huge. So what we're gonna do is we're going to refinish it underneath here so it's perfectly painted, so it's in good shape, so we know there's not gonna be any corrosion. And then we're gonna get new ice shields. So this side's off. We're gonna work on getting the other side off today and we're gonna get those ordered, which also means that we're gonna have to replace the ones that are on all these doors. So we've come across so many different kind of hurdles to getting this thing painted, you know, it's just one thing after another and wanting it perfect, you know, and we had that meeting with the, with the team that's gonna be painting it with us and they even let us know a few other things that we have to do the list um, just keeps growing. The list keeps growing, but yeah, it does. So they mentioned making sure that we jam these out before it comes, you know, so we're going to clean that up there and we're going to jam this, meaning that we're going to prime it here in the hangar and we're going to paint it body color here. Before it goes to the paint shop, I believe we're also going to go ahead and jam this stuff here. I think we're going to get this front painted, I think. We'll have to see, but, but I think this would be better to be painted because we have to put the nose on and actually to lay out the stripes. And if you guys have ever laid stripes or paint lines or anything out on like a really big, <laughs> like a really big item, it can be super tricky. And then the other thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna jam this here and we're gonna carefully paint this piano hinge with it off. And then we're gonna install the door and it's gonna go over to the body shop with this painted probably out to about here, body color, with the door on, which that also means that we have to strip the door. So just a ton, a ton of work, a ton of work. So we're working hard here, we're getting at it. This has been such a learning experience. And I mean, we're getting like 
I'd say between like 100 and 120 hours of work in on this thing a week. So always super excited about it because I know, I know it's just gonna look awesome. I know it's gonna look awesome and it's gonna be done right. Ready to get at it? Yep. All right. So we got the ice shield off. There was a uh, bunch of construction adhesive behind there. I've still got to remove that and the primer underneath there as well. Uh, all the rivets are out. What I did is like round the heads off, then just punched them through and it seemed to work pretty good. Yeah, making progress. So this one here actually, I see it's got a dent up here. So we have a dent here. There's a large dent and there's some corrosion in here. Yep. That's exactly why I wanted to pull these off. How's the rest of it look? Pretty good. The rest of it looks good. We'll get behind that and, and we'll work most of this out. Maybe use a little bit of filler in there. Oh, this is looking good. You're doing a heck of a job, Joe. It's looking good. So this was like, I, I can't tell you how much this was bugging me. That we, that we were going to leave the old ice shields on there at one point just because it's like, man. My fear was, you know, the first time they were actually needed, they were yeah. shattered. Yeah. Oh, then for the sure. There's no doubt. They were so dry, yeah. so old. And, uh, you know, to, to spend a couple of extra days in the hangar here, you know, it's just what we got to do. So if you guys saw in the last 401 video we had, I went out and got these wing cradles thinking I was gonna use them for, for the main wings on the 401. Boy, was I wrong because if you guys look, it's just about big enough for the tail. I'm gonna have to head out and I'm gonna have to grab some supplies because these things are huge, they're heavy. We wanna get them up and out of the way. We actually have some things coming here to the hangar that you guys don't know about. We're gonna share with you later, but we gotta get this place 100% cleaned up and we gotta do it this week. Joe and I were looking at the step assembly that we're stripping and getting ready for paint. And to our surprise, we found a couple issues with it. <laughs> so if you look right here, this is the tab for the hinge for the bottom step, which is usually going to be the step I think that pretty much takes, you know, the you know takes the uh, strongest load. But, um, but yeah, so that that's broken here. Um, the actual hinge is actually uh, broken as well. We're gonna head down to where we have the 402 stored and we're gonna take a look at the door for the 402, see if it's the same door with the same pieces. Maybe see if we have some parts, otherwise we'll probably have to order something. Should we check it out? Yep. All right. Yeah, it's got some good straps here. Yeah, because so, we were missing one. Well, these actually, and these are a little different and I've seen this, some 401s have a chain strap like this one and some of them uh, have a steel strap like was on that one, but I've seen 401s with both. So shouldn't be a big deal. Unfortunately, so this is a different design and I haven't seen these 
on 401s. So, it's back to the drawing board. Darn. Well, not only did we have a bird sanctuary, but to start taking this door apart, and I did notice, you know, a lot of wasps. And uh, I think I found a big portion of their home. Got one there, another one there. Oh, and there's even more in there. So we're gonna get that all cleaned out. So I've been working hard at these parts, probably got about a day and a half in cleaning and prepping for paint. As I said before, we're gonna be painting all the inside edges and jams, but I got them pretty well close. I even took and stuck them in the vapor home, cleaned up some of the hinges and everything. Kind of leery on doing that, that lets a lot of soot inside all the closed compartments, but uh, I've rinsed them out really good. I might have to give them a second rinse the more I look them over, but uh, yeah, got them all prepped and gonna let them dry here and maybe a little touch up on them, tape them up and paint them and that'll be another step down. So we got all the supplies here to build some gargantuanly strong, is that even a word, gargantuanly? Well, it's a word today. So to build some really big wing cradles, or actually one really big wing cradle for the 401 wings, because we gotta get these things up off the floor and we gotta get this whole hangar cleaned out because we have some exciting things coming to Rebuild Rescue and we need to make sure stuff is cleaned. And I think Joe is actually kind of tired of tripping over them. Yeah, so one of the things, when you build something like this, you really don't know how sturdy it's going to be. And for me, I just kind of keep adding braces and wood until it's sturdy enough to hold what I think it will be able to hold. Uh, I'm not promising anything though. This thing might, we might put the wings on it and it may collapse. It may completely collapse. So I've never built a wing cradle, uh, but we're about to find out if I can build a wing cradle. I don't know if I'm building like a wing cradle or a swing set. All right, so we got the wing cradle pretty much done. It actually looks like a humongous swing set. Maybe after these wings go out to get, you know, completely uh, disassembled and whatnot, maybe that'll be the swing set for Harrison and Sam to hang out on. <laughs> I probably just forgot it. <laughs> I mean, this is what happens when you're old. Are you, are you being, oh. are you being, <laughs> we have some fuel in this one. Uh, that tank's dry. This one has some fuel in it, so we're going to get the fuel out of it. And the other one has a bunch of water in the tank. So we're going to get the water out, 
then we can get these things up on the wing cradle, get the rest of the shop all cleaned up. And I can't wait because this shop has been a mess for months. All right, so I'm thinking there is about five gallons in here. What do you guys think? Sounds you, about right. What do you think, about five? Yeah. Looks like a really good clean fuel. So this is the side that we worked on the most. And it's also the side that we put fuel in. So my thought is this is probably fresh fuel that we put in. Well, year ago fresh. I can't believe it's been a year. It's been like a year. I can't believe that. So we got the fuel out of there. Yeah, it's about probably about seven and a half gallons out of there. There's probably two left in there, but and that'll be all right. So for those of you who don't check the seals on your caps normally, this is the color of fuel water you'll get out of it. So glad we're not using those anymore. All right, see if this works. I figure we just kind of attach it down pretty low. The only thing is, is this engine thing, we gotta flip this thing the other way. I flipped it the wrong way. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured it would do. Something that just hit me, getting it up off the ground where I can really look at it. Look at this, look how corroded this is. I mean, yeah, just rebuilding these things, pretty much insanity. So we finally got those wings up off the ground. We got a wing cradle built and the wings are safe and sound. I'm not saying I would walk near it. No, just kidding. It, it worked really well. It's good to have so much more room here. We do have a lot more stuff we have to reorganize in here. Uh, we're gonna get that done later on because for now, we gotta do a little bit of prep work yet. We gotta get it allodyned, rinsed off, and then we can prime the area, we can cut it in with some of our color. You guys didn't see the colors yet. You're gonna see one of them and you didn't see the paint job yet. A viewer had shared their rendition of the 401 and right away, everybody we showed it to was like, that's the paint job. I can't wait to show you. look in here you can see where we did a little bit of sanding and kind of broke the surface of the aluminum you can see how the aldine is really kind of etching into that but that's what it's supposed to look like it's supposed to get this brown hue to it that means it's bonded with it and it means that you're gonna have a good base to get your primer on top of yeah, So we're gonna let this set up a little bit and then we're gonna rinse it off and then we get to painting it this is like the first real paint that's gonna go on the 401 so 
It's exciting. On the next episode, you guys are gonna see picking the paint out, because we have already picked it out, and it was a tough process. I have a problem picking out what I'm gonna eat for cereal in cereal in the morning, nonetheless paint that's going to go on one of the most important airplanes okay to me the most important airplane in the world so this is like your air force one air force one <laughs> rebuild rescue one yeah So I know you worked on this really hard, and so I gotta give you the honor of putting some primer <laughs> on. So while the primer's drying over there on the 401, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this treated with aldine, we're gonna get this primed, and then we're gonna hop back over there and finally get some base coat on the 401. That is some bright white. All right, so that white is looking really good. It's a perfect color and this is all going so smoothly. We gotta get the rest of this painted. We gotta clear it yet. And then we gotta get the doors and stuff. So we're gonna get that stuff done, guys. Thank you so much for coming along for the adventure. Thank you guys for coming along, being part of Rebuild Rescue. Take care. <laughs>